Welcome back to the classroom, my name is Mr. Wong and today we'll be looking at combustion reactions. So, our lesson intention today is to identify specific features of combustion reaction, what allows a combustion reaction to occur. The main aim for today's um, lesson is to identify the products that form for a particular combustion reaction and writing word and chemical equations to demonstrate them. Okay, so combustion reaction, you might know this as um, the chemical reaction related to fire, burning, exploding. So let's actually get down into the nitty gritty stuff of what is it exactly and how can we produce it. So a combustion reaction is a reaction between any reactant substance with oxygen. So the main point we're trying to get here is combustion is all about oxygen, what you react with oxygen. You might remember when we first talked about corrosion, we also said it's a reaction with oxygen. But combustion is a reaction with metals, non-metals with oxygen, and it's a very fast reaction. It's a very fast reaction. It is also an exothermic reaction. What we mean by exothermic, it means that heat is released. So if you are near a combustion reaction, you'll see that the overall uh, reaction becomes much warmer in the surroundings. That's kind of the example we're dealing with here. In order to have a combustion reaction to occur, you need three things. You need fuel to burn. We'll talk about what reactants does that actually mean? You need sufficient amount of oxygen and you need energy to begin that process. Let's look at the three different types of combustion reactions you can get. One is the combustion reaction of metal. So a metal exposed to oxygen will make a metal oxide. In this example we have here, we have magnesium reacts with oxygen gas and you get magnesium oxide. The next one we have is a non-metal. Non-metals, when it reacts with oxygen, will produce a non-metal oxide. In this case, we have nitrogen reacts with oxygen to produce nitrogen oxide, monoxide. Okay. The last one is with carbon compounds, so all hydrocarbons. So we'll just rename this as the reaction with hydrocarbons. And this is things like fossil fuels, biofuels, all those kinds there. So a hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. So an example would be methane reacting with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so that would be the example we're dealing with here today. You can also balance it out. Okay, so we have four. So that would be the balanced chemical equation to represent that. Okay, to demonstrate combustion reaction, you can see this is a reaction with methane and oxygen. So similar to the equation you showed just then. The particles, as you can see, the oxygen gases will combine and take away the hydrogen atoms and split and some will connect with our uh, carbon, central carbon here. So this is the process of combustion. In most fossil fuel industries, you'll see combustion through the uh, emission of sort of black smoke. You can also see combustion reactions in a science lab. So with the Bunsen burner, when you burn gas, so your hydrocarbons with oxygen gas, you get carbon dioxide and water. That's what we said before. But if you actually ever notice, some combustions you might see a dark cloud and then some look like a white cloud. With the Bunsen burner, you have one that's a blue flame and then you have one that's a yellow flame. So what exactly is the difference between the two? 
Well, the thing is, not all combustion reactions are made equal. When you have a yellow flame, you have insufficient amount of oxygen going in. When you have a blue flame, you have excess oxygen. The saying goes, if you have a blue flame, it tends to be a lot warmer, so much higher temperature, and it's a lot more efficient in burning uh, things. Okay. So the reason being is because you have efficient oxygen, you are only producing carbon dioxide and you water. However, if you have insufficient oxygen, you produce a thing called carbon monoxide and potentially soot with water. If you've ever burnt something um, with, you know, a bit of glassware in the lab, exposing it to yellow flame, you might see sort of like a dark powder forming at the bottom there. That's actually the soot that you form from an incomplete combustion. So if you burn something and this forms that soot, then you know for sure that you have uh, an incomplete combustion reaction or there's insufficient oxygen. So I did use the term incomplete. So this is what we call it incomplete combustion. It means we don't have enough oxygen. A blue flame would represent a complete combustion because we have sufficient amount of oxygen for this reaction. I just want to note down what carbon monoxide is and why it's something we need to be careful of when it comes to uh, combustion reactions. You can sort of see the stats here of the different types of reactions. I might just get rid of the numbers to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so as I said before, besides the three different types of combustions you can get, there are also, at least for the hydrocarbons, um, different scenarios of combustion. You can have complete combustion where you have carbon dioxide and water because you have excess amount of oxygen. You could have an incomplete or insufficient combustion where oxygen is limited and you produce carbon monoxide or carbon soot which is just solid carbon. Now carbon monoxide is an issue and you'll see that in a lot of um, industrial or not industrial, internal combustion engines, besides forming this sort of ugly, sooty black layer um, of carbon, going back here, we've also talked about the flames and the smokes. So if you've ever been on a steam engine, there are different colors of smoke that it produces. A dark smoke, a light smoke, and a sort of grayish smoke or lighter smoke color. If it's a dark smoke color, it represents producing a incomplete combustion. So there's insufficient oxygen to the material you're trying to burn. If it's a very light color, it represents a more complete combustion where there is enough fuel source to react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question for this slide or presentation. It says, fill in the table below to compare the properties of complete and incomplete combustion for hydrocarbons. Let's have a look at the answer and give an explanation of the two tables that we see, or the one table we see here. For a complete combustion, you need excess amount of oxygen. For an incomplete combustion, oxygen is a limiting reagent, which in another way of saying is we have insufficient amount of oxygen so we need more there's not enough to react with the fuel source in terms of the products of a complete combustion for hydrocarbons we get carbon dioxide and water in complete combustion we could get carbon monoxide carbon soot or solid carbon and water the last question we're looking at is just a little quick quiz to check on our understanding. So first part of this quiz, it says, identify the elements always used during every combustion reaction. In that case is oxygen, and it is in the form of gas, O2. Okay, so it comes in pairs. So it's what we call a di molecule or diatomic 
molecule. So a molecule made out of the same atom. Name the compound produced by the combustion of aluminium. So we know that aluminium, when it reacts with oxygen, will form a metal oxide. So in that case, we get aluminium oxide. And you can rewrite the equation looking somewhat like this. Okay, so it would be two there, so we have four aluminiums, and we have overall six oxygens, so three there. Combustion in a plentiful supply of oxygen is known as a complete combustion. So that's how you do that question there. Just to end the lesson today for combustion reactions, I want to talk about a thing called backdrafting. So it's a thing that will be encountered by a lot of uh, firefighters. The concept where um, you starve the flame of oxygen. And one of the key points is never try and introduce the flame uh, back to a high amount of oxygen. What will actually happen when you introduce a sufficient amount of oxygen back to a dying flame is it can cause the flame to get um, to recharge in a, in a sense and become a lot more uh, excessive and it kind of has this burst coming through here. So it's one of the things a lot of firefighters uh, are, try are very careful of. Uh, when they do their firemen duties or firewomen duties is to ensure that this kind of backdrafting thing doesn't actually occur Okay, so that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you for following along. Give it a like and support um, Other videos to come in the future and I will see you next time. Take care